Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our final week in writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, so for those of you who are here, I believe you've all been pretty active on our course talk page uh, and asking questions or answering questions from the other students. Um, I've been really excited to see all the work that people are doing uh, on the different articles. And for this final session, I think really the most important thing is going to be to uh, to find out if there are any stumbling blocks people are finding to getting their articles where they want them to be uh, and hearing success stories of what people have been working on and why they've uh, what, what they've found to add to their articles and why they uh, have chosen to do the things that they've chosen to do. Um, it's it's really fascinating to see people working on such a wide variety of articles. Uh, of course, we have open educational resources as a uh, as a sort of a convening theme here. And there are a few different kinds of articles related to that. We've got work going on on the OER article itself and open educational practices, but then also on specific projects uh, like FET and OER Commons. Um, and then we also have people working on an article about a certain species of orchid, um, about a couple of people. Uh, there's a, a founder of a museum. Um, and uh, and several other articles. So I'm really hoping that in this final class we'll be able to hear from several of you, basically do the sort of thing that we usually only do in lab session. But I think uh, there are a few people who aren't able to join us for the labs. So it would be nice to have something a little more discussion oriented than we usually do in class. Uh, and then also, I want to be sure to uh, give you all some ideas about how you might remain active on Wikipedia if you'd like to do so. Uh, it may be, maybe some of you just wanted to take a quick, um, you know, take a quick six-week class and get a general feel for Wikipedia and didn't really have any uh, desire to stay engaged. But others will have found that it's kind of an interesting place to work and that you have an opportunity to really um, build something worthwhile by sticking around on Wikipedia. So I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable finding uh, sort of a home base on Wikipedia. Our, our class has been a really good rallying point, I think, for many of you uh, thus far. But uh, once the class is over, you're going to find that uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to find ways to get feedback on your work uh, or find people who are sharing your interest. So, uh, so we're going to cover a few um, different ways that you can go about that. Um, and then I have a few other ideas of things we can talk about as well. Uh, I think it's always, once you're once you're fairly comfortable with Wikipedia, as you all are now, um, it can be useful to look at the user preferences um, because there are so many different settings that you can choose to customize your experience on Wikipedia and make things work more easily. So we might want to look at, excuse me, at some of those options. Uh, and also, I'd like to I'd like to be sure that we look a little bit further ahead too. Um, I, in a discussion a couple days ago, uh, the idea came up that maybe we would want to plan out uh, a sort of a class reunion in maybe a month or so. So maybe we could schedule another class session like we've been having uh, maybe a month out, or maybe maybe there's a different amount of time, maybe a little longer. Uh, for anyone who wants to come back and check in on what's happened with their articles in the meantime, um, or if people have continued working on articles to share with each other. So I'm seeing uh, some positive response to that in the chat window. That sounds great. So let's make, let's make sure that we schedule something uh, before this class is done. Uh, I would throw out there as an idea that we make it one month from now. But when you think it over, we'll come back to that towards the end of the class. And if you have uh, certain dates that will or won't work for you, um, be sure to let us know. So. Um, Let's. Oh, actually, let, before we before we get into all of that, I want to review. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I see. I see. We have a question here. Are we going to have something like an alumni talk page? So I. Yes, I think that's. Um, what I, what I'd like to do is is guide you guys towards the um, the communicate OER talk page, which you may or may not have found in our. Um, uh, along the way in the class. Communicate OER is sort of the umbrella project that it's the project out of which this class grew. Um, so that's, in the short term, that's probably the best way for us all to, to stay in touch and maybe move 
uh, the kinds of discussions that we've been having on the class talk page over there. Um, and Molly, I think um, I, I think it's fine for us to have a little bit of discussion there that's not explicitly OER, uh, at least in the short term. Um, the uh, you know the, the that that page has not been terribly active so far, so um, you know I think it's uh, if if you want to kind of just use it as a place to stay in touch with one another, I think that's not going to be a problem. Um, if you find that you're really wanting to get into a lot of detail on another topic, then hopefully now or over time we'll help you find a, a wiki project where there are other people working in that area that will sort of uh, serve the, serve that purpose. Uh, maybe a little bit better. Um, I do before we uh, before we get to all the uh, the things that I mentioned before. I'd, I'd like to quickly review how you're going to go about um, applying for the WikiSu Burba badge, uh, which is the the badge for completing this course. Um, I, let's see. Uh, I want to share my desktop here, and I just want to go through what that's going to look like so that it's um, so you know what you're looking for. So let's see. Be at peer-to-peeruniversity.org. I let's see. I'm I'm going to go to my. I guess what I really want to do is start from our class page. So. So on the class page. You'll find this link to the WikiSu Burba badge. And if you click that, it takes you to a description of what the badge is and these criteria, which you are surely familiar with. Um, and then, now why am I not, what have I done wrong here? There should be a button for applying for the badge here, and I think that there may be two different pages that look similar. And this is going to be a problem if it's. Uh... Sarah, do you know what I'm? Hi, what I'm Peter. About? Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hi Hello, everybody. I'm Berlin. I'm in Berlin. Yeah. It's 3 a.m. I'm I'm really trying. <laughs> um, you, because you're logged in as yourself, you already have this badge, so you can't apply for it. Uh, of course, of course. Okay. So um, let's see. So what am I going to do? If I log out, will it show me that, or do I have to be logged in as someone who has it? Yeah. Okay. So I, yeah, I'm seeing it now. Oh. So there's this green button: submit a project for this badge. Uh, and then if you click that, is it going to make me? It's going to make me log in. Okay, so this is going to be a little trickier to demonstrate than I expected. <laughs> um. But I think people will find the process very straightforward if they just follow the links that we provide to the badge. Um, the process is quite straightforward, I, I think. That's true. So it is. So that link is. Uh, it's on the week six class page on Wikipedia, and it will take you here. And as when you click that big green button that shows up uh, when you don't already have the badge, as I do, uh, it will take you to a screen with uh, just three or four very obvious fields. You just put a link to your article, and then you're going to be asked to describe your project. Uh, and in that, I just want to be sure that you make reference to. The Wikipedia quality ratings that we've talked about a couple different times. So uh, that again is in the week six class page. Um, but basically, we what we're looking for you to do is to tell us a short story, not a you know, just write like a paragraph or so, but to give us a picture of what it is that you were trying to accomplish with the article, and and how that went for you. So um, you should you should describe how the article was when you first found it. So if it was if it was evaluated as a start class article, um, you would want to mention that and uh, and maybe say a couple of words about why you think it really was a start class article. Because as we discussed, those um, those ratings can be very subjective and they can often be very out of date. Uh, and then describe the things that you added to it and be as specific as you can. So if you added ten independent references to the article, say that. If you added uh, two new sections to the article, say that. 
uh, if you had a discussion on the talk page with someone outside of the class or with a classmate, uh, mention that as well. Uh, and especially if that discussion led to developing a consensus about how the page should look, uh, that's a good thing to mention as well. It's, it's not just that you were uh, you know, chatting with someone with a shared interest, but you actually got some work done. You actually, um, you know, developed a shared understanding of what it was that was lacking in the article and what was a good way to demonstrate that. So this doesn't, again, this doesn't need to be a very long description, but we really do want some reflection on what it is that was accomplished over the, the course of time when you worked on the article. Uh, and I think if you look back at the article, one thing you'll, you'll really probably want to do is to click in the, the, the View History tab of your article and go back to the version of it um, before you started working on it. And I think many of you are going to find that you actually did a whole lot more work than you even realized because as you were doing it in you know, one little piece at a time, it's easy to kind of lose track of um, uh, just how much ground you've covered. So hopefully that will be uh, an enjoyable experience when you do it. Anyhow. Um, uh, hey, Pete. Yes, hi, Christine. Hi there. Um, if I could just um, add one more thought to that. Um, my experience in applying for the badge last mm -hmm. year was that um, the, the P2PU form um, was, in fact, not, it, 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 it has a limit on how much you can punch into it. And my solution to that was to put in a link um, to something in my sandbox where I could say as much as I wanted to, uh, which I thought worked pretty well. So um, that's something that um, others might find yeah. useful. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I had forgotten about that. But yes, that's a, a very good point and, um, yeah, and, and a very elegant solution. So um, let's just step back for a moment and uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear from a few of you or even all of you uh, about where you're at with your articles. Um, and I think in the last, in the lab session, we, we've heard from several of you, and I'm just going from memory here. Uh, I don't think I've heard anything recently from Cami or J. Roxy Chicks or Molly about where you're at with your articles. So if, if any of you would like to, uh, to take the microphone or just to type something in the chat window, I'd be very interested to hear from you or anyone else as well. Oh, yes, and, and Clem, uh, you, oh, yes, Glenn, I haven't heard from you recently either. Uh, but Clem, you say a blog post might be in order. That's, uh, we actually do have, uh, uh, I believe Kathy just posted a blog post on the FET blog about her new article on FET. So uh, it's, it, it would be excellent if people want to blog about their experience working on, on Wikipedia articles. Molly, you're having some image issues. So let's see, yours, yours is the Jacob Strader, is that right? The Jacob Strader steam, steamboat? Or am I, no, I'm sorry, I'm confusing you with someone else. Charles Curley, right. Let's see, there's a middle name and there's, there's a trick. Yeah, there we go. So Molly, do you want to, uh, do, is your microphone working? Do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on with this article or? Hi guys, can you hear me? Sure can. Um, so my problem is just as far as formatting. I can't seem to get the images to go where I want them to go or to okay. stop places. And when I looked at the information, it was really confusing. Okay. How to do that? Yeah, that can be a little tricky. Yeah. So, um, one one thing to keep in mind with image placement is that there are two. There are two. Like you can either have an image or you can have an image thumbnail, and in Wikipedia we almost always use thumbnails. So if I'm just going to put this as an example without this thumb parameter here, and I'm going to do a preview. So you see these two lines? 
<laughs> and the first one just gives us the image. It gives us at 100% of whatever size it was uploaded as. And there's no caption. And it defaults to being on the left. But then down here, you see the one with the thumbnail. It shows it at a specific size. So it's, it's reduced down to a standard size. And it defaults to being on the right-hand side of the page. And it also gives you a place to enter a caption. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the help pages, is that there are these two pretty fundamentally different way of putting in an image. And if you're reading the instructions on one while you're doing it the other way, that you can kind of get turned around easily. Um, but I'm sure that's not exactly what you're asking about. I just thought that might be some useful context. But what, what is it that you're trying to do with these that, um, that isn't working out? Well, I, I don't like the, the, pr the profile um, bronze picture. It's, mm -hmm. it's not ending at life and death, it's like cutting into the publication uh -huh. section, yep. and I don't want it to do that, but I can't get it not to. Right. OK, so there's a very useful template for that issue. Uh, and I'll show you what it is. At the end of a section, if you want it to basically be a clean horizontal break before the next section starts, just put in the template. And, and to do a template, that you put two squiggly brackets, and then the template is called clear. And I'm going to just save this. And that, I think that's what you were looking for, right? Yeah. You know, with a fair amount of white space, but yeah. And there's actually another thing uh, that might help now that we've done that. If you want to reduce the white space a little bit, um, when you have a thumbnail, there's oh, actually the upright is already there. So that's OK, so upright you already found is something that modifies the, the size for a vertical image. And I suppose this one already is. I guess it would be a little bit bigger if it were. Um, it it makes it smaller size. as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So it is possible to specify the size. So you can just put in, instead of upright, we might say like 100 px for 100 pixels. That's probably going to be very small. But there you go. So you can you can play with those sizes. It's it's generally uh, not encouraged to use highly specific sizes like that too much, just because so many different people have different monitor sizes. Um, sometimes people are printing out an article. There are a lot of different ways that people can be viewing it. So to be highly specific with the size is not always a great idea. It's it's generally considered better to use things like the upright parameter that you'd put in there. But that's not an absolute rule. And if you're if you've got a section that just won't look right unless you do something like that, um, it's definitely an option you want to consider. Thanks, Pete. Sure. So anyone, oh, I see Christine has given us an example badge submission. Oh, great. So this is Casalinks, who I think is, I don't think he's joined us for any of our classes, because I think he's in Spain. So he's, uh, I guess not as, uh, as motivated as Sarah, who's with us at 3 in the morning. <laughs> um, no, but, uh, but he has been working on the Spanish language version of the OER article. So um, I just saw this submission just before class. And I haven't had the chance to really review this in detail. But just my first impression is that he has really added a tremendous amount to this article. It's, uh, I'm going to just click on it here so we can get a quick look at it. Um, it's, I think the original article was just just this lead se section, more or less. I don't think it was more than a couple of paragraphs. And now you'll see, I think he's done this mostly by translating the English article, but I'm sure that he's also added his own touch in some of the sections. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to making heavy use of Google Translate, I think, in, uh, in evaluating this article. Although, um, I think, uh, Christine, I, I think you have more Spanish than me. Um, so if you wanted to help me review this, or really really anyone wanted to go through and add some comments um, before uh, before we sign off on the badge, that would I'm sure he would really welcome any feedback. I do see that he's had some discussion uh, with another with a Spanish Wikipedia user on the talk page, and I was uh, or actually, I think it's maybe more on their user talk pages. 
uh, and I was trying to read through that and finding it, it's, it's taken me a, a little while to bounce back and forth with Google Translate, but, um, but it's great to see that our interactions around OER are, are transcending language barriers. Sí, yo poco y yo hablo y poco un español. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyone else who, uh, especially people we haven't heard from for a little while, uh, who wants to tell us something about the article they've been working on? Oh, what, what should you do if the article is not rated? So, Redwelly, this is, um, this is certainly you can ask someone to rate an article. Um, if there are other people that have been working on an article, uh, you could click on their user talk pages, or if there's a wiki project associated with the article, you might go to the wiki project's talk page. But um, this is, you know, I think that would be a useful exercise, but it's not required for the badge. So what, for the badge, what I really want you to do is explain to me in your application for the badge why you feel that it has increased one, uh, one step on the quality ladder. So um, this, this is where being specific about the things that you added to it is going to be important. So if, you, if, if the article was rated at stub class or start class and it only had three citations and two of those were not independent but were actually written by the person that the article was about and part of what you did was that you added ten independent citations, then that would be something you would want to mention. So you want to mention the things, the specific things that you did, um, especially as they relate to those, the quality criteria. So. Uh, I would, once again, I, I really would like to hear from some more of you about your articles, but um, while you're thinking that over, I'm going to jump over and, uh, and talk a little bit about wiki projects, and, uh, and then I'll come back and see if anyone else has some more things to share from their article uh, in, in a few minutes. So let's see, now I'm on the Spanish Wikipedia. I want to get back to English where I can actually read it. So we have talked a couple of times in the course about wiki projects, and I'm going to uh, just pull up the main page on wiki projects. So just for, for review, a wiki project is a, a page or a collection of pages on Wikipedia that are designed to support uh, groups of people who, who have a shared interest in a topic so that they can work together to improve that topic area. So you might have Wiki Project Basketball, where people uh, decide what, what articles on Wikipedia most need work around basketball. Uh, you might have Wiki Project Snails, or Wiki Project uh, uh, Kenya, uh, for articles relating to Kenya. Um, it really can be any number of different uh, kinds of topics. And then there's, there's also similar concepts like the League of Copy Editors, where it's not so much a, a, a topic area on Wikipedia, but a kind of editing on Wikipedia, where, where people want to work with like-minded folks. Um, so in a way, our class has been similar to a wiki project. Every time that I've directed you guys to look at our main class page or uh, leave a comment on our class discussion page, those are the kinds of things that people would typically do in a wiki project. But as we, as we wrap up the class, uh, you're, you're going to find that our, our class discussion page is not the vibrant discussion uh, forum that it has been. And if you are eager to find people to work with so that you can look at the work that they've been doing and give them feedback and ask for the feedback, uh, for feedback on what you're doing, you're probably going to want to find a wiki project to work with. So. Um, I, I want to I want to take a look at a few different wiki projects, and then I want to suggest some that we can uh, that uh, that you might want to stay involved with. So, um, as I think I've done in this class before, I'm going to start off with Wiki Project Oregon, and I just do this. Because 
because this is my uh, the, the wiki project that I most frequently contribute to. So uh, this is actually, you know, maybe not the best example in that it doesn't, it's, its front page is a little difficult to navigate. Um, this is <laughs> really something that I should take care of or really any one of us uh, in the project could take care of. It's, it, this is kind of old school. This is, you know, we started in 2006 and uh, in, the, in the years since then there have been a number of innovations that make wiki project pages uh, easier to use, like the, like sort of a tabbed interface and things like that. And we've never really gotten around to incorporating that. So in that sense, this isn't a great example um, of an easy to use wiki project. But it, so you see a lot of sort of random sections and bits of information on that front page. But if you look at the talk page, you'll get a bit of a sense of why, um, why I like it and why it's, you know, why it's useful for people who are interested in a topic. Um, you know, you get, you get people talking about sort of random collections of things within that topic area. So, you know, here we have a, a list of startup companies in Portland. Um, here we have someone announcing that he was going to work on uh, something about the holiday May Day. Uh, and then another announcement of uh, working on an article that he had just started. You have an announcement here of a WICNIC. So the WICNIC is, uh, in the, at least in the United States and maybe at this point around the world, um, every summer we encourage Wikipedians to, um, to put together local picnics in their area and it gets advertised. Uh, you may have seen this if you're based in the U.S. when you're um, when you're logged in, if you look at your watch list, um, actually, I'd better log in so I can show you this. Uh, there will be a um, an announcement about a local Wicknick. So here, you see, it's the the Wikipedia software has noticed that I'm in the San Francisco area, so it tells me to join the Great American Wicknick. And when I click on this, it's going to, oh, actually, I guess it's just noticed I'm in the US. So I would have to click on here and then find the one in my local area. Um, so I'd go to this page on Wicknix and then go to the section on the west. And look, there's Bay Area Wicknix. So I can go here and add my name to the list and show up at this event and meet other Wikipedians. So, um, Anyway, I, I kind of went off on a tangent there a little bit, but um, the, you know, the basic idea is that the, the, the top page for the wiki project can really cover any number of different things that relate to whatever has brought people together. So you might have anything from, I just created this article and I want to improve it, to, um, you know, I live in the, the place that we've all come together around and let's get together for an event. They can, they can have that sort of informal feel that we've had in our class. And they tend to over time as people kind of get to know each other and learn about what each other are interested in. So um, let me just pull up a, another example. And if anyone knows of interesting wiki projects, please feel free to, uh, to make suggestions. This is, I'm just sort of going to kind of random ones that I've encountered over the years. Um, the ones in the sciences, I think, tend to be very active and very high quality. So um, I think wiki project uh, chemistry is, uh, is one of the more active. I know wiki project mathematics. Uh, like in, in for many of the tools that you see on wiki projects, like the assessment tools and things like that, uh, I think I think wiki projects chemistry and mathematics were the ones that um, that first established a lot of those. And so when someone comes up with a good idea of how to structure a wiki project in one place, often other wiki projects will copy that and incorporate that into how they work. So here you see this nice box at the top that gives uh, open tasks. So if you're thinking, I'm interested in chemistry, I want to work on articles around chemistry, but I don't know what needs to be done, uh, they try to maintain a list of things that need cleanup. Uh, article collaborations. Now this is actually one of my favorite things in a wiki project. It's, it's rather unusual that one will have it, but just to identify one or two articles as the collaboration of the week or the collaboration of a month so that people in the project who are interested in working together 
um, can all work on the same article over this, over a certain period of time. So it looks like um, yeah, it looks like so here we are in June 2013, and it looks like maybe uh, scientific peer review or environmental chemistry have been identified as the collaboration of the month. So that can be a nice way to uh, to sort of focus people's attention on one article and really make a, a big improvement on it in a short amount of time. Uh, does anyone else know of any wiki projects they'd like to share with us? Oh, I see I've been missing things in the classroom, in the chat window. My, uh, the link I punched in is wrong, Pete, but wiki project for philosophy is pretty good. Oh, yes, I would imagine it would be. So let's see, wiki project. Let's see. <laughs> you just told me it was broken, and I went ahead and clicked on it. So as you may notice, what I'm typing in, Usually, to find a wiki project, all you need to do is type in WP, which is actually the abbreviation for Wikipedia, for the Wikipedia namespace, and then type in the, the name of that topic or that field. And that's usually going to take you to the wiki project. Sometimes there's, there, there's another meaning it might have. Um, but even so, it, there'll usually be a line at the top that gives you a link to the wiki project. So yes, this does look like a pretty well-structured one. Um, so we've got subtopics listed nicely here at the top. Uh, and th so there's this notion of a task force. So if you're interested in, uh, in epistemology, um, wiki project philosophy would be covering a lot of things that maybe aren't in your uh, specific interest area. But then there's going to be a page that's devoted specifically to that subtopic, uh, and often even a talk page that's, uh, that's devoted to that subtopic as well. Now, it's. One thing I really want to be sure to point out is that wiki projects, there's, there's, a, there's a pretty strong tendency for wiki projects to kind of become ghost towns. So someone will get very excited about um, getting people together on a topic and start a series of pages, and maybe a whole bunch of people sign up for it. But if there isn't um, a strong effort early on, to sort of uh, decide how people are going to work together, often that early energy kind of fades away over time. And so if I'm looking at a wiki project and thinking about whether I want to join it or, or how I want to engage with it, the first thing that I will do is always look at the main talk page for that wiki project. So here we're, we're in the epistemology task force. So I'm going to go back to the main the wiki project philosophy page and click on the talk page. And then I would scroll down to the bottom probably seen me do this a couple times during the class, and look at the dates on the most recent comments. So here I see one from May. Uh, down here at the bottom, here's one from June. Uh, if I scroll up a couple of screens, I'm seeing a few more in May. So this is telling me that this is a relatively active wiki project. If you see, so in this case, I'm seeing, I don't know, maybe half a dozen or maybe a dozen article or comments uh, within the last two months. And that's a pretty good amount of discussion for a wiki project. Um, you also want to look at what those comments are. Sometimes those will all just be announcements, like that invitation to the WICNIC that we saw before. So they might just be people coming by and saying, hey, here's this thing I think that might be of interest to the wiki project. But that person isn't really a member of that wiki project. So uh, sometimes it actually might look like there's more activity than there really is. Another really quick thing you can do is to see how many responses there are. So, you know, in this case, we're we're seeing some back and forth. We're seeing there's a comment and then there's a response and a response back. Uh, and if you scroll through the page and you see several places where there's actual discussion where people, one person is talking and then someone's responding, that's another indication that there's real activity there and it's not just people announcing something and then getting no response to it. So uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, in response to a question at the, at the beginning, there, is, there are a couple of wiki projects that are uh, of interest to people uh, who care about open education. So um, probably the most active is wiki project open access. 
Um, and I, in this case, I'm going to type in OA, but I think I'm going to find I need to. Yeah, so this is something different. This redirected me to something different. But it does tell us in the first line, you may be looking for Wikipedia Online Ambassadors. No, that's not me. Or Wiki Project Open Access. So here I can, in one click, I can still get to where I was trying to go. Um, so open access is not the same thing as open educational resources. It's specifically about, uh, about how academic journals are published and whether it's possible to access them online. So it's very closely related to the idea of open educational resources, but it's a different emphasis. But there is no uh, specific wiki project about open education. So this is a good place to go if you're, if you're interested about in things in that area and you want to find other people with at least generally similar interests. The one that is, uh, is closest to a wiki project on OER is our project, Communicate OER. Um, so actually, so the, the shortcut is going to be WP colon com OER. Um, so this is something that Sarah and I put together as part of the, project, the, the, the Communicate OER project that led to establishing this class. And here you'll see a, a, a tab interface that uh, is becoming rather common on wiki projects. And uh, all of our, the way that we set it up, all of the talk pages redirect to the main talk page. So if you click here or if you click here, you'll get to the same place. And this is a great place to bring up any work that you're doing on OER related articles. Now it hasn't been, because most of the activity of this project has actually been in the class, our talk page has up to this point been much more active than the Communicate OER talk page. But I would really encourage you, any of you uh, who are here mainly out of interest in OER, or really any of you at all, um, to shift your attention at this point from our class talk page over to this talk page and, um, and use this as sort of the main way to stay in touch moving forward. Um, and then there's also, if, if there are specific people that you've been working with, they're, they're pretty simple things that you can do to stay in touch with those people. Make sure you add that person's user page to your watch list so that you see when, uh, you know, for instance, when they're responding to comments on their talk page and things like that. Um, you also might want to uh, look at their user contributions once in a while. So if, if, if I'm logging in and I know that, uh, that Sarah is someone that I've enjoyed working with in the past and I haven't logged in in a few weeks, one of the first things I might do, uh, I would look at my watch list uh, and see what's going on there, but then I also might want to just go to her user page and click on user contributions and see what she's been doing lately. Because this isn't going to be, just because I'm following her user page, just because I have her user page on my watch list doesn't mean that I'm going to see the contributions that she makes in other places on Wikipedia. So this is a good way to see what the most recent stuff that she's done in is. And I might see, oh, she's been working on, um, you know, oh, well, she, she left a note for this, this person. So I might click on that and see what she had to say. And, you know, then maybe I would go and leave her a message about what she's been working on. So uh, Wikipedia can really be one of the one of the great strengths of Wikipedia is that it's so flexible that you can really do whatever you want to, but it also it it becomes kind of important to create your own experience as you uh, develop a sense of what it is that you want to work on, who it is you want to be working with. Um, in a, at a certain point, you kind of have to take it into your own hands to make sure that you're finding the kind of activity that you want to be uh, engaged with. So any questions about all that? I feel like I just threw a lot of uh, a lot of information at you, and I'm sure there are some questions coming up. So I'm going to try to catch up in the chat window again here a little bit. But if anyone wants to call my attention to something I missed, please do. Oh, Clem asks if it's possible to add the user contributions page to an RSS reader. Yes, you can. Um, 
if you're if you're on a user contributions page, let's see. So I'll just go to mine here. Um, you see in the toolbox, there's this uh, Atom link. So I believe that is uh, probably the best formatted link for an RSS feeder. Or you can just copy what's in the URL and I think add it to an RSS reader. This is something I've done before, but I don't, I don't remember exactly how it works too well. But um, actually, let me, let me show you an interesting variant of that. Um, so in Wiki Project Oregon, we actually this has become rather inactive, but we uh, we created a blog at one point to talk about our work in Wiki Project Oregon, and one of the things we did was create this feed uh, in the upper right of the page that um, tracks changes to all articles of interest to Wiki Project Oregon, and this is based off of an RSS uh, feed. So. Specific feed it's linked to is this related changes with uh, oh you know I'm not I, I don't remember exactly how all of this fits together but I guess in in the short answer to your question Clem is that yes RSS is a is a great tool for following lists of things like this on Wikipedia and if you are familiar with how to set it up go to it and please report back to the class about uh, useful ways that you find to use that. Um, because it's uh, it's sort of beyond my technical comfort zone, and I don't really I don't really remember all the best ways to use it. I kind of have to put stuff like that together myself every time I encounter it. Yeah, so the watch lists watch lists are definitely the way to go. Uh, it's just that you kind of miss um, you t you tend to if if what you're interested in is following the the contributions of specific users, there's no way to add that. To a watch list, so uh, you'll probably find if you stay active with Wikipedia, you'll probably find that there are certain people that uh, you're always interested in what they're working on, and they give great feedback, and they're interested in the feedback that you give. You know, you're just like-minded, and so that's that's why I'm kind of emphasizing the user contributions, is that that's really the best way to kind of take the pulse of of what they're up to. Oh yes. Build of copy editors and pull that up. No, that's the right. Okay, so copy, WP colon copy editors is the or any of these shortcuts will get you there. So Lori is asking how to get the link to a Google image to display the image. So um, yeah, I think I saw this on your article. It's actually not possible to display an image that's not hosted on Wikimedia's servers. Um, and in order to upload it to Wikimedia's servers, it needs to be under a free license. So um, this can be kind of frustrating sometimes in trying to build an article, but the, the reason for it is, is that one of the things Wikipedia is trying to do is to build, um, build a resource that can be very actively reused by other people and republished in different ways. So um, in, in a case like the, um, the ORCID that you were working on, I think it's probably better to put a link to that image or to the uh, the blog post that contained the image and use it as a reference. Um, and then if, if someone's interested in that, I believe it was, uh, it was about the, the, the parts of an orchid flower. So if what someone's interested in um, is what the anatomy of, of an orchid flower is, they'll be able to click and find it on another website. But you, you wouldn't be able to pull that directly into the Wikipedia article unless it happens to be available under a free license or unless you have the ability to create a similar file yourself and release it under a free license. Does that make sense? No, that may not be the most satisfying answer, but it's just kind of how it is. So I've been talking a bunch here. Is there anyone else who uh, who's thought of something about the article they're working on that they'd like to share?
I have a question about this Wikipedia discourse again, Pete. Okay. Go ahead. So I, I stumbled into this discussion about the article on David Wiley this week. And um, we're, we, we're um, disputing the um, appropriateness of Google Scholar as a verifiable resource. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, probably not without some context. Um, is this, am I at the right talk page here? Looks like it. I'm seeing your name there. Yes, you are. I, I'm arguing that uh, Google Scholar is not the same as just doing a, a web search and that it's a, an academic resource because it, it in fact, lists actual mm -hmm. um, journal articles and um, somebody else um, has a different opinion and we're sort of going back and forth. So I thought I would just uh, put this out there as a a discussion topic for us. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, so I yeah, I, Christine, I I feel like this is maybe going to be a little bit more specific than we can get to without like I I would probably want to read through this and and think it through a fair amount. Um, but I think the general if I can kind of guess, it's probably where he's probably coming from is the idea that um, so it's this section here, right, where where it lists the ten most influential publications. Yes. So um, my take on that. So so. Sorry, it's I guess that stepping ball, back you can from ignore it if you want to. It's okay. No, I, I think the the answer I want to give is kind of is coming to me. It's just taking a moment. <laughs> um, so imagine, like, uh, before we get to Google Scholar, imagine two other ways of doing a list like this. On um, one end of the spectrum, you might say just Wiley's ten most influential publications are and list them, and that would just be in Christine Bush's opinion, right? Um, that would not be acceptable on a Wikipedia article. There needs to be some some authority that has asserted that those are the ten most influential publications. At the other end of the spectrum, you might have um, you know a, a, a peer-reviewed article in um, in an education journal that that states unambiguously that David Wiley's ten most influential publications are X Y Z, and that would definitely be considered worthy of publishing in Wikipedia because it's the opinion of established experts in the field and that that brings the authority to the article. So Google Scholar is something that's really in between those. It's um there is some reason to um and, and, and I only have a minimal understanding of how it works, but you know if it's based on on uh, metrics like how many people have cited the articles in other articles that's in some ways that's an objective it's an objective measurement but it's an objective measurement that um, the decision to use that measurement as opposed to um, well this very important person chose to cite his article prominently you know in the first paragraph of his article um, that might have a lot of weight to it and that might not be reflected by something that is purely um, numeric like Google Scholar so Google Scholar is going to fall into a strange gray area where uh, it doesn't surprise me that uh, someone found it worthy of bringing up for discussion. I don't know. I mean, this, I'm not going to comment on his opinion because that's where it gets too detailed, and I would want to read it through and think it through. But I, that's sort of my general. That's that's kind of the lens that I would look at something like that through. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Oh, and I see Ben has found, found an essay about it, which is excellent. or maybe he's responding to someone else there. So let's see. Um, someone, I think Ben mentioned dispute resolution, which is actually this is actually something something I really wanted to uh, to get into in this class as well um, is decision making and dispute resolution. Um, these are, I think, if 
if you're interested in getting kind of more deeply involved in Wikipedia, you're going to, or, or just if you stay involved at the level you are, over time you're probably going to run into situations where, um, where, where broader decisions are being made about um, like what kinds of articles are notable in a certain field or um, maybe someone is behaving in a way that's problematic and there's going to be a discussion about whether they should be blocked from editing. Um, things like that. And so it's, it's, it's a good idea to have an idea about how uh, decisions and disputes are handled in the broader sense of Wikipedia. Um, so everything that we've really, most of what we've encountered so far has either been one or two people talking on an articles talk page or just the people in this class where we were, we're sort of independently de developing a class relationship with each other uh, talking things through. But when you're, when you're talking about something that might be of interest to hundreds of Wikipedians in different countries around the world, you know, and some of them are teenagers and some of them are, are PhDs, you know, at the end of their career uh, in the field, or some of them work for the company that's, that's uh, you know, that the article is about or something like that, you can imagine that they become a lot more complex. Um, and so, Let's see, is there an overall page on dispute resolution? I think there is, yes. So um, this page on, on dispute resolution is going to give you links to, it's, it's going to give you first a framework of how, uh, how things should get discussed and resolved. So you can see from the table of contents, the, the, the first section is avoiding conflict. How are, what are the ways to avoid having things escalate and get to the point where they're a big problem to begin with? Um, and then it, it walks through what are, the, what are the options that you go through if that doesn't work. So um, how do you reach out to someone else to, um, to weigh in on a, on a situation? Wiki projects can be a really good good resource for that. Like if you start an article and someone says, hey, that's not notable or I don't think that's neutral, uh, the best place to go is often the most specific place. You want, you, you want to find the wiki project that is most closely related to that topic as opposed to immediately, you know, making an appeal to the arbitration committee or something like that that might uh, invoke a whole complex interaction among a bunch of people who don't really care that much about that specific subject area. So this page is going to be a really good resource for uh, understanding what the different options are and the different processes. Um, and then there are going to be a lot of links here to, so here are some, some policies around the, the kind of uh, user conduct and user behavior that relate to disputes. Uh, and then also there, somewhere on here, and it's been a long time since I've looked at this, uh, yeah, there'll be, so there's this, this section on notice boards. So these are specific venues where specific kinds of disagreements can be worked through. So like one that I'm, uh, uh, let's see, what would be a good example? Like the notability notice board would be a place to have discussions about articles that are maybe in the gray area of like there are a couple of uh, independent sources about them, but they're maybe not very in-depth. So when someone has a concern about the notability of a new article, this is where they'll leave a note and you'll see there, there'll be discussions back and forth about whether that topic is notable. Um, now just because this is linked from the dispute resolution page does not mean that these, are, dispute resolution sounds like a big scary thing. Um, and something like this really, for the most part, it's not. Um, it, it's, I think, a, a case where the, the, the simple name uh, doesn't really convey what the page is like. So on, on a page like this, usually you'll find lots and lots of different things that are, um, someone's bringing it up for discussion, they, they want another opinion, but there's really no uh, big dispute about it. Um, it's just a matter of needing to talk something through and make a decision. Um, so, so I would really, for anyone in the class who would like to uh, to continue to be involved in Wikipedia and kind of step up their involvement and get a deeper sense of how it works, I would very strongly encourage you to visit 
one or two of these notice boards and just and leave a comment on something. Find a topic where you uh, where you can understand what's being brought up, but you maybe don't maybe you need to do a little bit of reading to uh, to fully understand what's at issue, and then leave what's your opinion. So the reliable sources notice board. People are going to be bringing things up and saying, uh, you know, is 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 this newspaper or this journal a reliable source for this topic? And often, like, there's a really big need for for people who are not deeply involved in that uh, in in that article to weigh in and give their honest take on that. So you can really help that process out a great deal just by thinking it through and leaving what your impression is. And you'll also learn a fair amount about how this kind of thing works on Wikipedia. Um, and then one other page that we started with early on uh, that I want to remind you about is the community portal. So this is in the main navigation in the inter interaction menu. And the community portal has this nice uh, section uh, towards the bottom called Help Out, or I guess about halfway down the page, that breaks things out by um, by topic area. So if you want to work on fixing spelling and grammar for a little while, this will suggest a few pages that have been um, been tagged as needing that. If you want to check and add references, you can find that section. So this is another good way to uh, explore what's going on elsewhere on Wikipedia. Yeah, Lori, that's uh, that that dynamic is one of one of my favorite things about Wikipedia is um, sometimes just by poking around and finding places where I can do something to improve an article, but I really don't know a whole lot about the topic. It can be such a fun way to learn. Um, you know, I remember at one point early on in, in my Wikipedia editing talking to someone about how I had been editing the article about a book that I hadn't read. <laughs> and, and this person wasn't a Wikipedian and she was initially she was shocked, like, why would you do that? How could you possibly, you know, <laughs> how could you possibly have something to contribute to an article about a book you haven't read? But as I'm sure you're all Sort of getting a sense of right now. There's so many different things that you can do to improve a Wikipedia article. In many cases, it's just making it a little more readable, dividing things into sections that make it easier to understand, fixing typos, um, formatting a reference, and often just by doing things like that, it's sort of a more interactive way of reading about something. And by the time you're you're done leaving your stamp on it and making your little bits of improvements, uh, the article's better off, and you've learned something new. As Ben says, great for pedants like me. <laughs> so I see we're rapidly approaching the end of our hour here. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we come up with a date for our reunion before we're done. So why don't we, why don't we talk about that? I'm going to just uh, take a look at my calendar here. I am thinking that one month from today might be a nice natural date to shoot for and just do it at the same time. What do people think about that? Let's see. I'm still pulling this up here. So I'll give you an exact date in just a moment. So I guess um, July 16th at the same time of day. It's going to be rather late for me because I will probably be on the East Coast, but that's fine. So I see a couple of yeses. Ben will be on a sailboat. But Ben, if you think really hard, I think you'll be able to reach us. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's do July 16th. And I think if it uh, if it goes well, if it's well attended and, and uh, people find it useful, we can always schedule another one. And so Ben or anyone else who isn't able to join us might have another opportunity. So I'll be sure to send out an email about that. And then also, uh, I want to just put in the link to the Communicate OER page. 
Oh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I, there is a lab on Thursday. So uh, I know a couple of you have not been able to make that time. So um, I guess this is goodbye for a few of us, but the rest of us will be convening at our regular time on Thursday. And also, um, I don't know if I've said clearly in the class before, uh, the, what we're expecting for the submission for the badge is that you would put your submission in by the end of the week. Uh, but that's, that's a, a fairly loose guideline. Uh, I think that most of the people in the class who've been working on articles really have uh, gotten to that point already uh, where it makes sense to put in for the badge. But if you feel like there's more that you want to do before you submit, um, it's, it's fine for you to take a little extra time. There's really no time limit on when you apply for the badge. But uh, at the same time, it would be nice to award some of them as the class comes to its conclusion. And then if you want to keep working, you can uh, take on something new or, uh, or you know, take on a new quality level for the article that you've been working on. Pete, I noticed there's a P2PU course that your name is also listed on. I don't know if you're taking the leadership role that you are in this course in that one, but it's uh, about writing, it's about trying to get your article to featured article status. And I was just curious what your role in mm -hmm. that was. Uh, so that's actually, I, I attached my name to that. That's, that's something that someone else, I believe Sage Ross, who was on our, um, on our Wikipedia expert uh, panel, or maybe yes, that, I, think I think that was think in the first Sage. session. Yeah, yeah I, I believe Sage was one of the people who first started that. Uh, there were a few people who did, and um, I don't think it became very actively promoted. I think it is a good framework, uh, and I just I kind of put my name on it and have been keeping an eye on it uh, now and then, but I wouldn't say I've put a tremendous amount of work on it into it. Uh, there is actually another peer-to-peer -peer university class in development um, called Why Open. Uh, for anyone who came to this out of an interest in OER, that may be a very interesting class to look at as well. I'm not, I don't think that we have, I don't think there's a page published on it yet, but I was on a call earlier this week. I'm going to try to contribute to that as well. Um, so that would be, I think that's going to be probably like a two or three week class that's focusing more on the philosophical aspect of, of what, what are the advantages of doing things in an open way in education or in, in various disciplines. So uh, if you're interested in that, um, maybe shoot me an email or leave a note on my talk page and I'll try to uh, make sure that you hear about it when the course is announced. Or if you want to help plan it, um, I'll put you in touch with the, um, the person who's planning it up. Okay, I see we have some interest in the chat window. All right, so I think we should wrap this up. And hopefully I will see just about everyone on Thursday. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if you need to stay up until 3 or 4 in the morning again for that. But if you want to, of course, you're welcome. Uh, and to anyone who isn't able to join us Thursday, thank you so much for joining the class. I hope it's been valuable to you. And please stay in touch. Bye-bye. Thank you all.